The unemployment rate recently dipped very slightly, and that's good news for South Africans. And But while the job gains are positive, youth unemployment remains relatively high. It's prompting calls for a change in focus from conventional employment to creating marketable opportunities for themselves. University of Cape Town professor Kelly Chibale joins us this morning to talk about creating those very opportunities for young people. And it doesn't sound like a very easy thing to do, um, professor, because we live in a country where the economy has been on a downward spiral for years now, and not discounting the role that things like corruption have has had to play. So when we talk about creating marketable opportunities, what exactly are we talking about here? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me on the show and uh, good morning to you and to, and to, the, to the listeners, to, to the viewers as well. Um, I think creating jobs and opportunities, I think, is the responsibility of, of, of all of us. It's, it's, it's not just government. Um, so it's, it's really going to be a partnership between government, uh, business, um, academic institutions, uh, including um, technical and uh, vocational training things. Um, so the, what this really, really means is about real entrepreneurship, um, encouraging and incentivizing um, entrepreneurship, because this is job creation is not necessarily just the responsibility of government, but of course, government is there to uh, provide a conducive environment in which uh, business uh, can flourish. Um, but it requires all of us at all levels um, in academic institutions, in the technical and vo vocational colleges, which is something we actually overlook, that is not always about going to universities to get a university mm. degree, that this technical and vocational colleges are so, so important. Uh, and Rafila, this is one of the reasons why Switzerland, for me personally, is, is a wonderful role model of a country where the training of artisans um, and technicians, electricians, is so highly valued because those skills are so important uh, to our economy as well. You know. Yeah, no, that's very important. And, of course, um, as you say, that answer, we think about the important sectors, sectors that are going to be necessary for the future. And you will speak about uh, science entrepreneurship. You know, maybe talk us through that and its relevance in the current world that we live in. Thank you. So maybe to give an example of, of how a, a drug discovery center here at the University of Cape Town, which we call H3D, so when I talk about science entrepreneurship, um, it's on one hand, when we are involved in research and development, and this is really uh, what you see largely occurring in the global north, um, is that when you are focused on doing research and development, often to solve these complex problems. You require bringing multiple disciplines uh, together to tackle these very complex problems. But in the process of doing that is what you do is that you are actually creating jobs. You are creating opportunities. You are creating the absorptive capacity to attract and retain talent. Mm -hmm. so, so science is not just about curiosity. Um, science also, when it's happening, even before a particular problem is solved, um, it creates jobs. Yeah. So, so that is the kind of entrepreneurship that we're talking about here, is that investing in research and development, starting from really investing in the skills that we need in science, technology, mathematics, engineering, yeah. those are critical skills that we need to really, really make sure that young girls, women, uh, the youth in general are incentivized and really encouraged to develop careers in, in STEMs because this is the skills, these are the skills that we need for research and development. Um, and I can unpack further when you talk about just the discovery of medicines and their development. Yeah. So we can talk about a value chain in research and development. And as I mentioned earlier, it's requiring multiple disciplines, for example, in chemistry, in biology, pharmacology and medicine, but also eventually when a product or a vaccine is developed, if it goes into clinical trials, we are creating avenues and opportunities for job creation in manufacturing, 
you know, manufacturing um, medicines for clinical trial uh, development, that creates jobs yep. because somebody has to fund the clinical trial. Somebody has to build the infrastructure that's needed. Mm -hmm. um, so manufacturing is not just manufacturing a, a product which is approved to be given into people, but it's also what happens before that product is, is given. So I'm really talking about the research and development value chain interacting very closely with the manufacturing value chain. And I think that's a business case here is that science creates jobs um, and opportunities and of course inspires people to want to contribute to economic growth um, in partnership with all the relevant stakeholders in industry and government. Mm, very interesting insights there. That is the head of drug uh, discovery and research at the University of Cape Town, Professor Kelly Ichibale, joining us this morning about uh, marketable opportunities within science entrepreneurship. You heard there, it's an entire value chain that doesn't just focus on research, but the manufacturing, the distribution, the transportation. So a value chain of employment that could be created uh, through this kind of venture.